By now, everyone has heard of the little movie making a big noise called Sound of Freedom. A small, very low-budget movie, Sound of Freedom was destined for mediocrity. A quick, quiet release, probably in late 2019 or so, a year absolutely stuffed with films upon films upon films all struggling for air. Sound of Freedom would probably have made oh, $10 million at the box office, and then it would have vanished from the public mind forever. But a funny thing happened. Disney happened. Yes, along came a mouse. Sound of Freedom was filmed and finished all the way back in 2018, five years ago, 20th Century Fox acquired the distribution rights to the movie, which was, in hindsight, the best thing that could have happened to Sound of Freedom. Because in early 2019, Disney bought 20th Century Fox and all that the company had, including Sound of Freedom. And for some unknowable reason, Disney decided to shelve this movie. Now, the most benevolent assumption was that Sound of Freedom while actually only PG-13, had a tone which was completely incompatible with the Disney brand, so Disney had simply decided to slip on the movie until they figured out what to do with it, and they never got around to the figuring out step in the plan. Maybe. At any rate, filmmakers spent the next few years trying to get the rights to the movie back to them. Eventually, Disney faded it back. So, Sound of Freedom was distributed five years later than expected, and the rest was recent history. Now that the abomination known as Barbenheimer has captured the box office, it is unlikely that the movie will make tons more money. Even still, Sound of Freedom's current haul is not only impressive, it is extraordinary. Beyond that, it is great news for the future of movie theaters. Let me explain. For the last several years, the general consensus in Hollywood was that to make a blockbuster hit, let's say earnings over $100 million, you needed two very important things in your movie. You needed highly recognizable stars and a highly recognized script. So without either of these things, and the film is doomed regardless of quality. This seems to be the case as recently as last year. Robert Eggers' The Northman was highly acclaimed it was by all accounts an excellent movie. And to be fair, it did have some fairly recognizable stars, such as William Defoe and Nicole Kidman and Anna Taylor Joy, and it was based on some pre existing IP, Proto Hamlet Myth. So, compared to most mid sized Hollywood flicks, The Northman was essentially an original film, and it did not do well at the box office. Prior to Sound of Freedom, the general idea of a small movie doing well was something akin to Asteroid City, which made almost $50 million in a budget of nearly 30. And while Asteroid City did possess an utterly original script, it was also packed to the brim with big-name actors, which is probably why it did as well as it did. Prior to Sound of Freedom, the most recent example of a small movie doing fantastically was Everything Everywhere All at Once, which shocked the industry by grossing almost $150 million. Everything Everywhere did have a small budget, compared to the average Hollywood movie, and it did have an original script. Still, Everything Everywhere had big names. Jamie Lee Curtis played a supporting role, and the movie was produced by the bloody Russo Brothers, which is about as big a name as producers get. Furthermore, a good argument can be made that a large factor contributing to Everything Everywhere's success was that it essentially rode the hype train surrounding Doctor Strange 2, which itself released only a month later. While we don't have an exact budget for Everything Everywhere, some estimates have it at almost $30 million. Sound of Freedom, on the other hand, has a budget of half of that. In other words, it only needed about $35 million to make real bank, counting for marketing and theaters taking half of the revenue and whatnot, as of the writing of this script, Sound of Freedom has made well over $130 million at the box office, and I would be shocked if it fails to pass everything everywhere all at once is high watermark. Only accounting for the domestic box office, this smallest of small movies is neck and neck with Mission Impossible 7. So, what does all of this mean for Hollywood? 
Nothing good, I'm terribly afraid to report. The entire raison d'etre for the big Hollywood studios is that only they could invest enough money into movies to make box office hits. This is officially no longer true. Hollywood's metaphorical monopoly on theaters is over. Now that smaller studios can compete with Hollywood, they will, and if Sound of Freedom is any suggestion, they will beat some big-budget Hollywood movies. Hollywood's hubris, their refusal to make good movies on reasonable budgets, Dial of Destiny might have apparently been made for $100 million, is about to come back to bite them hard, and I, for one, am here for it. Thanks for watching, and I will be back very, very soon.